All right, this is going to be our lecture over uh, Section 5.1. So Chapter 5 is about single-phase systems. Here what we're doing is we're adding to the skills we need to be able to solve the problems out of Chapter 4, those material balance problems. And one of the biggest challenges is finding the data so that you can do the solution. This will become even more of an issue once we add energy balances into our toolkit. So we can look up the data, and the appendix of your textbooks frequently are the easiest resource. But if you don't have that, then Perry's Handbook or the CRC are two of my favorite go-tos. The Perry's Handbook is something that is free through AICHE membership. Student membership is free. To get there, you go to www.aiche.org, go to community slash students, and then there's a button there that says get a membership. Click on that, join AICHE, costs you nothing, and then you have access through their e-library that includes things such as the Perry's Handbook and several other really great resources. If you can't find the data, maybe it's a new chemical that you're developing, then you're going to need to measure it, or you can estimate it. And ways to estimate it include equations of state, uh, depending on what you're trying to do once we get to some of our stuff like talking about what phase things are in, we'll add the clausius clapeyron equation or Raoult's law. So in this chapter, we're going to talk about how to look things up and how to use that data once we get it. And we're going to talk about it, estimation techniques using equations of state. So in this particular lecture, our goals are going to be that we can find density data for solids and liquids in the textbook and then use that data for pure solids and liquids to estimate the density of a solid mixture or a liquid mixture. Now, those mixtures of solids and liquids combined, that's a little trickier. We're going to be covering that in a future chapter. So, liquid and solid densities. For the most part, liquids and solids don't change density or change volume very much if you change the temperature or pressure. Okay, we typically say that something is incompressible, meaning that the density is constant. That's great because that means I can look up a value in a data table and use it for conditions other than specifically what's written into the table. But if I have a mixture, I need to be able to deal with that. Okay, so for mixtures, I'm going to want to calculate an average density. You can use a simple average, that may work okay, but what people have found works the best is this very complicated looking expression. So basically you're taking the reciprocal of the average of the reciprocals, okay? So you're going to take the, well if you have your density is in mass per unit volume, you want mass fractions divided by the density, okay? Add those up for all your different terms, and then the reciprocal of that will be the average density. Okay? Again, solids dissolved in liquids will not work this way, but for mixtures of solids, mixtures of liquids, this is a great technique. So let's look at an example. We have a liquid mixture here. We've got a mixture of benzene and benzaldehyde. We have 60% of the benzene by mole fraction and 40% mole fraction benzaldehyde. And we want to figure out what volume I need for a 500 gram sample. Okay, so I'm going to need data. So let's go to the appendix of the book. So these are the lines out of the appendix of the textbook. Uh, so table B1, it's several pages, but go through there until you find benzaldehyde and benzene. And as you go through here, what we're really looking for is these specific gravity values, okay? So the specific gravity is given at 20 degrees centigrade, okay, 20, yeah, um, 4 degrees is for gases. Um, that's really the only data I need at this point in time, but this is what I'll be looking for. Now, the specific gravity I'm going to take and multiply by the density of liquid water, okay? And so I'm going to need to, since that's going to be like one gram per milliliter, I need to convert those mole fractions to mass fractions. 
So the easiest way to do that is go ahead and find that molecular weight data. And then I also have this, I can say this, okay, specific gravity. And so I have these for my two different chemicals. Now, if I assume a basis of 100 moles, then I have 60 moles of the benzene and 40 moles of the benzaldehyde. I can convert that to mass using the molecular weight. Now, remember, molecular weight, molecular mass has units of like grams per mole. So if I have 60 moles and the molecular weight is 78, then I'll multiply those to turn it into moles. So I've done that calculation there. I can find the total mass, and that will tell me the mass divided by the total mass will tell me the mole fraction or mass fraction, okay, which is this category over here, this column. And then I can just simply take that and divide by the specific gravity. Now remember, specific gravity is a lot like density, it just is unit free. So I can then later use these results and come up with an average specific gravity. If I add these together, the reciprocal of these of the specific gravity is 1.042, the sum of these two. The specific gravity there is the reciprocal of that, 0.959. And now then, I can use that with one gram per milliliter to come up with the density of this mixture. 500 grams divided by 0.959 grams per milliliter, and this will be a 521 milliliter sample. So this concludes our video for Section 5.1. Next, we'll be looking at Section 5.2, where we will be uh, beginning to talk about what on earth we're going to do with gases.